strawberry frappuccinos, and a black leather jacket. Chapter 22, A Confession's Muse. Written and narrated by Eleanor Rose. Artwork provided by Marlene Bruce. The lights were bright, but they'd never blind her. This was Chloe's stage now. The way the audience cheered when she stepped on stage? Iconic. The banter with Jagged Stone? Textbook. The giggle and wave she sent the audience? Goals. The energy when she locked eyes with Adrian? This was her night, and nothing could take that away from her. It was like all the background screaming in her brain died, replaced by waving lights and yelling fans. Sure, she still posed a lie, but she felt like herself again. That was worth its weight in gold. It was, until Jagged Stone asked for her hand and she stepped forward pinning the tool of her dress under her stiletto and ripping half the skirt off at the waist. The crowd, screaming moments before, went silent. She looked down in horror, tears prickling her eyes. Calm down, Chloe. You've been through worse. Well, she said, her voice shaking. I guess these heels are sharp enough to kill a man. The crowd laughed as Jagged Stone put his arm around her. Nice recovery. It's a shame Marinette saw her taint her reputation in real time, but at least it wasn't as bad as it could have been. There were mobs of press flashing lights at the front gate by security, and Chloe knew her face in the ripped dress would be the talk of the town tomorrow. She scanned the crowd for Marinette, knowing she'd be by Adrian and Nino, but couldn't find her. What? The crowd was too large to look for her face by face. Where'd she go? She was there before Chloe walked on stage. Adrian sent her a selfie with her, him, Nino, and his date before the show started. She should be here. Did she walk out because of her mistake? Oh no, she must be mad. No, livid. If she were Marinette, she'd be livid. Not only did Chloe coerce her out of her identity, she also tore, literally, her reputation. Breathe, Chloe, just breathe. The background screaming in her brain was on full blast, rattling her thoughts. She was so close to happy, and, like usual, she ruined it. She ruined it all by herself. She stepped away, grateful the appearance was a short one. She needed to get out of here. The dressing room seemed further away with every alligator-clad dancer she passed. Two steps. Six. Don't break a heel. Left turn. Right turn. Knock. Doorknob. Turn. Couch. It. Collapse. <sighs> Chloe took a breath as she lounged on the chase, relieved to be off stage. A mirror hung across from her, displaying the damage she did to the dress. Okay, it wasn't too bad. Ripped, but a good Instagram photo of it wouldn't be a bad idea. She could make it look trendy with the right angle. She stood up to approach the mirror, pulling out her phone to snap an image. What angle would work best? Sitting? Then she could show off the heel she designed. Her screen blew up with notifications when she unlocked it, taking it off night mode. Her Instagram following grew by... Chloe didn't know. Thousands. Like after like plastered her screen, and comments of love and adoration flooded her photos. She was already an Instagram model, but she wasn't used to attention like this. She jumped from the high 80,000s to nearly 100k. 
Was this from the concert? Who tagged her and what? It shouldn't have exploded this quickly. Was it from the dress ripping? Had she become a meme without knowing it? Adrian would have the time of his life if that were the case. She sat on the floor and tilted her chin up, eyes down to show off the eyeliner with her lips parted. Staggering her legs, Chloe leaned back on one hand after styling the skirt portion of the dress over her legs, but not the stilettos. There. She went to her photo editor and touched up the cool tones, making sure the lighting matched her summer-themed aesthetic. Bumblebees and strawberries. That's what she was about. Why, on their first date, Adrian got her a strawberry frappuccino. It was easy to remember, because she took a photo of it and he was leaning back in a chair wearing his black leather jacket. She didn't find out until much later that it was the first time he'd ever made one for someone else. The thought of it made her smile. She had so many memories with him, but to her, a strawberry frappuccino was the taste of their story. Yeah. That's what she'd do. She'd get a strawberry frappuccino with Adrian after the concert. That'd be nice. It'd be nice to clear everything up. A week ago, Chloe would have made the caption all about her, but she didn't want to tie herself to this. For the first time since the name floated around her ears, Chloe didn't want to be Ladybug. She wanted to be herself. The last few weeks were an incredible, unforgettable experience for me, she typed. What would Marinette think of this? The last few weeks were an incredible, unforgettable experience for me. I was introduced today at Jagged Stone's concert as Ladybug, but I'm afraid that isn't true. I was a stand-in for the real, incredible person whose reputation precedes me as they would prefer to stay anonymous at this time. I was able to work with the designer, Ladybug, in person while preparing for this concert, and it was a humbling experience. Their talent and patience are flooring, and there's so much I want to learn from them professionally and personally. It was through connections and a little mischief on my end that led me to this unique experience with this long sought after designer, and I still can't believe it went through. Thank you for all the notes and love, but I'm sorry to say I'm not who you think I am. I'm not Ladybug, but I am a designer with passion. The shoes I modeled at the concert today were my own, and I'm proud of them with all my heart. I hope you stick with me as I grow professionally. And just you wait, Ladybug. I'll make a name for myself that will be up to par with yours, hopefully as friends. With love, Chloe. She sighed, proofreading the text before publishing it. Hopefully Marinette wouldn't get mad. Chloe meant every word. She was tired of lying. That, and she wanted to get in front of any cards the real Ladybug might pull. Chloe wasn't a fool. If Ladybug made the first post, Chloe's reputation would be over. She wouldn't recover from that type of scandal. Not entirely, at least. If Marinette retaliated, it would look bad on Ladybug's reputation. Retreating to the couch, Chloe lounged whilst waiting for the concert to be over so she and Adrian could go on a date. He was only a few hundred meters away, but she missed him terribly. How was my fall? She typed, classy. Three dots lit up her screen as he typed a reply. My lady, even a cat couldn't compare to your grace. She laughed. His way of flirting was silly, but she loved it. So, after the show... Yes? Strawberry Frappuccino and chill? I wouldn't miss it for the world. She pressed the phone to her lips and squealed, giddy at the thought. He was such a great boyfriend. Butterflies in her stomach jolted her brain, shooting her upright. Butterflies. The best inspiration. Chloe grabbed a paper towel from the vanity and opened her makeup bag. There weren't pens in the room, so abandoned eyeliner would have to do. 
She hummed to the music laced with screams, turning her body as she twisted her wrist to carve her idea. This was good. This was a stroke next to genius, actually. Who would have thought confessing that she wasn't Ladybug would be her muse? Chloe felt exhaustion wave through her by the time she was done, wrist pounding in pain. Eyeliner wasn't easy to work with, and the image was smudged beyond salvation, but the guts were there. Her design was there. Just you wait, LB, Chloe muttered, holding the towel up to the light. I'll make you proud to know me. Just you wait. End of chapter. A huge shout out goes to my patrons who helped support the creation of this video. You can find more information at patreon.com backslash Mira writes. Chapter 23, titled My Queen Bee, will be available Monday next week.